Hi, I'm John Carnes, a drinking water analyst with the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy. This video covers how to properly collect a bacteriological drinking water sample. It also includes some tips and rule highlights to help keep your public water supply in compliance. For the purposes of meeting compliance, routine samples must be collected from sites that are representative of the water quality throughout the distribution system. Public water supplies must sample at sites identified in their sample siting plan. Total coliform bacteria are found naturally in the environment, on skin, plants, in the soil, and they're also found in digestive tracts and feces of animals. While total coliform is widely present in the environment, it should not be present in drinking water systems. Regularly testing your drinking water is one way to monitor the integrity of the distribution system. If detected, the result indicates that there may be a pathway allowing contamination to enter the distribution system. Let's move on to how to properly collect a bacteriological water sample. Make sure you have the correct sample bottle for total coliform bacteria testing. You should always use a new, unopened bottle. Some labs use a 100 milliliter bottle, while others use taller bottles with max and min fill lines. The bottle may contain a powder or a tablet. This is sodium thiosulfate, which counteracts any chlorine in the water. This is okay and should not be rinsed out. If there's any question of the integrity of the sample bottle, do not use it. For example, this bottle has been opened and has no seal. Instead, get a new bottle and collect your sample. Before you collect your sample, be sure to remove the aerator if it has one. Wash your hands, wearing rubber gloves is optional, and disinfect the sample tap. Now that we're ready to sample, turn on the tap and flush the cold water for two to five minutes or until the water reaches a consistent temperature. This means you've flushed any stagnant water in the premise piping. Reduce the water to a steady flow that doesn't splash. The stream should be about the width of a pencil. Do not adjust the water once you have reduced the flow. If you have a chlorinated system, whether it's permanent or temporary, be sure to collect a chlorine residual. Now grab your bottle. Remove the cap from the bottle and hold the cap with the inner surface facing downward like this. Do not set the cap down. This could cause cross-contamination of the sample. Fill the bottle until it reaches the fill line or between the max and min fill lines. The sample must be 100 milliliters with space between the top of the water and the cap. Do not fill it all the way to the cap. The lab needs space in the bottle to conduct the sample analysis. Sample collection should be done in one motion. Remember not to overfill. Recap the sample bottle with the downward facing cap before turning off the water. Then turn the water off. If during this process you overfill the bottle, dump it out, get a new bottle, and start over. Do not dump it out and reuse the same bottle. Now that you've successfully collected your water sample, it's time to fill out your lab paperwork completely and accurately. Remember, you need your public water supply ID or PWSID, sometimes referred to as the WSSN, and your facility ID, formerly known as the site code. You will also need the sample point ID, sample location, sample date, sample time, collector name, and type of sample, whether it's routine, repeat, triggered, special purpose, or other purpose. It's important to have your samples delivered as soon as possible. That's because bacteriological samples have a 30-hour hold time and need to be analyzed within that window. Please follow any lab-specific instructions that may have come with the sample bottles. Be sure to coordinate with your lab. Some labs do not accept samples on Friday afternoons or around holidays. It's always good to have a backup laboratory that's open on weekends in case repeat sampling is necessary. If you are notified of a positive total coliform routine sample, Repeat samples are required to be collected in the next 24 hours. If you are a groundwater supply, triggered raw water samples are required from each well within 24 hours for every positive routine water sample. For any samples that are total coliform positive, the laboratory must also analyze for E. coli. If E. coli is present, you must contact your regulating authority by the end of the day. If you're a community water supply, contact Eagle. If you're a non-community water supply, contact your local health department. Thanks for watching. Happy sampling.